grace every time. Yeah. Can you imagine? Like at this time when it is school time, exam oh, time. My brain doesn't know what time or at this time anything. My brain just wants to rest. <laughs> but the past time many months, left, right, center, pressure, pressure, pressure. Wow. Yeah, okay. I understand. Talking about time. <laughs> We are going to be talking about study habits today and our guy here is going to learn what study habit is, how to go about study habits and the excellent ways of having a study habit. What is your name please? Your level and also department. My name is Rafael Adaba. I'm a four-year level student of mass communication and um, literally my final year now. So. My name is Hannah Omoka Fedinis and just like him here, I am in 400 level mass communication department and as much as I would like to just go away or let me use the word japa out of this school I still want to be able you know to do amazing things and have fun while studying. Hello my name is Dami Lola Charles a 400 level oh, I would even say graduate at this point I'm a graduate I've tried I've tried all this while well, seeing undergraduate that graduate at least I'm a graduate so yes and I can totally relate to the aspect of him saying he's tired you know he just needs to do something to you know engage his brain. I can also relate to that because sometimes when you are you know all this educational something like the conventional way, it gets it gets boring and it's not it gets boring and it's not very interesting. So I can really relate. Sometimes you just need your mind to have that leisure time, that your mind to calm down, to you know watch a movie, do something an activity. Then when your brain is relaxing, you can properly understand what you're doing. So we're going to be talking about study habits and our topic is study habits by group two. So first of all, I'm going to say what I believe study habit is. Study habit simply means those things that makes um, that makes up your activities regarding studies. Take for example, what do I do or how do I go about my studies? How do I go about studying my exam for my exams? Let's say um, I maybe wake up in the middle of the night and I get to study for four hours and then I sleep and the next morning I can write my exam. For somebody else, it could be that they wake up um, in, the, in the morning, let's say 4 a.m. in the morning, they study for two hours and they are very good, they are way to go, very, very active to be able to write their exam. They study habits and I believe habits are things that you form over a long period or there are perspectives or characters that you sustain over a sustained period. And then um, study, as you all know, study is in your ability to immerse yourself into something, you know, give yourself that the ability to learn either from a book or from an article or from anything. And so personally, I would say study habits are things that every every human must develop, every human must, must inculcate. And like, like Hannah said, she spoke about how different persons have different study habits. And like the saying goes, different strokes for different folks. Or well, as a human, I mean, it's a popular saying that um, when you want to hide something, or as Africans, when you want to hide something from an African man, put it in a book. So. It's, it's, it's common knowledge to know that for every human being around the world, you must be a student. I mean, we're all students. You must learn. You must learn from books, whether written, whether published, or whether unpublished. You must learn. And for you to be able to learn, you must learn how to study. And for me, I mean, trust me, like Dami said, studying is difficult. I think that's the key word. The key word is consistency. Because for any habit to be built, you must be consistent at it. You must you know, develop it so much. So, I feel like study habits are important, study habits are good for us to grow. They are difficult, but you must just be working them. And personally, I would say for me, I would say studying in intervals is all works for me. And I don't have said you know, for her sometimes waking up at night and all that. And if I do waking up at night, you know, I remember say I wake up by 4 a.m. and I woke up by 6 a.m. But you wake up at night to watch movies. <laughs> the movies give you pleasure, guys. You can't even compare. I can't even compare pleasure and pain. Oh, pain is not sweet. Studying is hard. <laughs> but for me, I like studying at intervals because, you know, when I study for like 10 minutes, then I do something, come back, read again, read again, read again. It's, it just helps me grasp everything together. And my mind is just like little sponge. You know, just, just accumulate, accumulate. But okay. study habits are very important. And I feel everybody that wants to go yeah. must develop it. Well, to me, like you said, the keyword consistency. Um, study habits to me are those habits or those um, approaches 
that you use that which can aid your understanding those approaches how you go about learning about something the things you do the actions you perform that makes it um, easier for you to grasp or understand that thing each individual have their own unique or kind of study habits that aids um, learning for them lots of people like you even mentioned this movie thing now there are some people they will read read they will not understand it but just after watching a movie or doing a leisure yeah, activity extra and the extracurricular activity exactly and then extracurricular activity through that gang. through that activity now this can be a learning process for them that's why during our class he was saying when he was saying the different approaches to education you know there's that using games using tasks and all of those yeah, things exactly. to, to you know to incorporate that into learning because we have people have different ways of assimilating things of understanding things so it's really important to understand the unique um, habits that aid your understanding and the things that would help you to learn better. So that, like I said, it's unique to each individual. And the key word is consistency. You have to know what works for you. So that's just my own definition. So um, let's say a hundred level student comes to ask you now. Like, oh my God, I heard you're in 400 level, right? So how do you think I should be able to study my notes to be able to maybe hit a first class or hit a very strong two one and the rest? Well. Experience is the best teacher. Mm. I'm a first class student, mm. so I would say this is how it should be. I would say, I mean, to get a sustainable to to get a sustainable good result, I think that's the that's the word. I would say it's about consistency and consistency and discipline. I think these two these two perspectives are very important for anybody that wants to develop a strong study habit and also eventually develop a very strong result. So if you're if you're consistent in reading, like I mean, growing up, we, the, our parents used to always tell us, you know, read every day, you know, read even if you stay at one hour a day. But we're like, more. Did you do that? Well, at a point. Mm. <laughs> are you sure? Why you sticking last long, to watch movies? Really last long, but I watched a lot of movies. And I found out that whenever those tests come, or these exams come, I become overburdened and all that. But I noticed that when I started reading, maybe. Now let's get a note and let's read it to get a that read it. Practicing yeah. and practicing. I think it was Bruce Lee that said, I fear a man who That's practices. Quotes, movie quotes. Like, quote. like, I you fear a man. I ain't talking, I ain't talking. Okay. I fear a man who practices one kick a thousand times mm. than a man who practices one thousand kicks one time. Mm. So you see, it's about, yeah, yeah, it's about yeah. mastery. Can they help you learn when it's part of your gun? And discipline. Discipline is very, very important. You know, there are some days you wake up and you're like, yeah, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that. You don't always feel like it. Like, me and Dami now, at this point, we are done. We are done. done. So what man? When we go back home, I remember that almost CGP a few drop. You yeah. eventually start. So you must be disciplined, you must be consistent. And I think these two things are very important for any for any student, under level or even PhD. Like 100 level students approaches me telling me, okay, how can I get this? What I'll first of all say is, what works for me would definitely not work for you. You have to first of all understand how um, the kind of way, like how you assimilate things, how you understand. Know the, like you have to understand yourself first of all. Like you understand, you have to know the ways or manner that learning, that learning is easier, like what aids your learning process. Because if I tell you, okay, I wake up 12 a.m read till 4 a.m. This is how I'm able. And you, you are not able to, even if you wake up that 12 a.m., you'll be sleeping all through. You'll not be able to assimilate anything you've read. So it's just basically like you didn't even do anything. So you have to understand how your unique capabilities, how you are able to understand, um, assimilate things properly. The key words I'll just tell you to um, take note of is the consistency of whatever you're doing and be disciplined. Whatever approaches you use, be consistent in it and be disciplined. And that's how you achieve results. Not copying what somebody else is doing. That's why you have to understand yourself and know the ways or manner in which you can aid your learning process. I'll give my own personal experience. So in 100 level, I thought that um, university was a secondary school, right? So you just come and you, then you just learn the key points. Like let's say they ask me what is a word. And then I just come and I just learn the key points, key definitions of what a boy. I ignore the characteristics because, well, my teacher is just going to look for what a boy is, right? But then when I came to university and I saw my first year results, I knew that I had to go and ask questions as to, okay, how do they answer questions in the university? How do they go about things in the university? And then knowing that I had to learn the hard way after seeing my GPE or my CGPA that 
you have to be able to put in the characteristics of every single thing. When you're writing for a lecturer, you have to teach him in a way. Okay, well, how do you understand this topic? Well, how do I go about it? If somebody else was who are reading it, would it be very comprehensive for the person? So I ask, okay, what is a boy? I give him a definition of a boy. Okay, these are the characteristics to look out for to know that a person is a boy. In our world today, you have so many people identify as different things, right? Somebody can be having a characteristics of a girl and then comes to tell you that, okay, I am a boy. But then the very conventional way you are able to explain to your lecturer that, okay, sir, this is what a boy is, or her, ma, this is what a, a boy is supposed to be. Moving on now, let's talk about time management. So, what do you understand by time management first? Then, before we move into understanding how it can relate to, you know, study habits and the like. This time management is, you know, your ability to, I don't use the word manage, mm. but your ability to make good use of your time, you know, take advantage of your time. And I mean, we all know that time is of essence. Time yeah. is very important. Time is our greatest asset. You know? Besides, the only, the only way you can make impacts, the only way you can get good grades, the only way you can do anything is when you have time. I mean, if you don't have time, it's, it's, it's as good as nothing. So. You pointed out that resonated when you said some people, they'll be like 24 hours is too small for them yeah. to get to assimilate something, while others will be like 24 hours is too much. So, to some extent, one can say time is an illusion based on the individual. Oh, you create oh, oh. and set your own time it's, it's, it's based on... Fire, fire, fire. You create your time based on like what you are able to, your capabilities, what you are able to do. Like you have to know how, you have to know how to use time, not time using you. So like, oh. you have different ways. I mean, you can buy iron. Yeah, it's it's, no, it's 50 iron. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we need to, to have a time, time board that say you need to know how time to use your time. And how you work with time. Yeah. Yeah. Work with time. Yes. time you know how to use, use it to the best yeah. you can yeah. use it. So, so like I said, <laughs> time, cannot use time management is different from anyone. You have to know how to utilize time to perfect it. That's just... So now that we've been able to say, what um, time management actually is. Now we have to relate it to education. Yeah. How, how do you? How would you advise a student right now, now to be able to, you know, um, apply time management to their studies? You know, in this um, particular session that we are in right now, as much as we have finished our exams, some people have not finished their exams. Yeah. And then this session was really, or should I say, this particular semester was really short. Started in July, August. By September, we're already writing exams. Don't yes, and a lot of people could not cover a whole lot of things. So if this particular thing or this particular situation should happen again, how would you advise a student, right, that is yet to graduate? Would you um, advise a, a student, yeah, to be able to apply time management to their studies, to not feel, you know, pressured, to not feel combat, to not feel um, tight when it comes to exam and test time? Yeah, you know, like we said, time management is arguably the most important skill that is going to mention literally. And I mean, in school or in education, if you don't have the ability to manage your time sufficiently, I mean, you come up with poor grades because you'll not be able to read sufficiently, you'll not be able to assimilate properly, and you'll not be able to even grasp everything you're doing. So for every student, I think the best way is to incorporate time management in your in your activities is probably having a timetable. I think that's that's one very important yes. thing. Is that you must have a timetable or a schedule or a to-do list or something that you wake up to. Timetables are very important. Timetables are very, very important because when you build when you build a culture of having timetables or having schedules or to-do lists, you can you can achieve so much, so so much. Because I mean imagine waking up in the morning and not having what to do already, not having plans, not having goals or things you set even before the day came. I mean, you're just going to the day and be like, come on, you just look at me like that. So, aside, as a student, aside having your school timetable or your class timetable, you should also have a timetable for yourself. So, okay, I'm finishing lectures by 2 p.m. Okay, from 2 to 4, I'll sleep or I'll rest and get something to eat. From 4 to 6, uh, you know, if you're, a, if you're a sports person or a movie person, you can use that time to relax. And then from 6 to 8, I'll read this course. And then from 8 to 10, I'll read this course. And then from 10 to this, I'll sleep. I'll visit this person. I'll do that. But for as long as you have schedules or you have timetables or you have a to-do list that guides you, I think you'll be very, very good. And your, your, your time management skills will evolve and you'll be able to achieve so much. And I think timetables and also discipline, and it's, it's very, very important. If you have these two things and they come together for you, and the ability to also be, I think one thing we don't really highlight is the ability to also be very, very bold. You know, when you have timetables as a person, many people want to come and, you know, infringe your time. You know, that time that you want to, 
eat. It's not one guy is coming and say, oh, my guy, did you watch that match? Did you see this guy? Did you down? Yeah, that's, you know, it, it should be quite a lot of boldness for us to look at them and say, oh, my, I, I can't do this right now. And it might, even, it might even ruin your relationship and all that. So I think having this time um, timetables, schedules, to-do list, and also the boldness to say yes and to say no when you need to. It's a skill that a lot of people take for granted. You know, when, when we are talking about skill, people just, okay, ability to do that, yeah. project this and all of that is a cute. They don't know the essence and like the Like ancient people like Hannah. Oh, wow. I am ancient. Oh. They don't know the importance yeah. of time management. It's, it's really a great skill that a lot of people don't have and do not know how to utilize. So you being time conscious, know how to manage your time, it's really going to help you in a long way, even beyond the educational and it's going to go a long way in helping you like to develop yourself, develop your skill and all of that. So that's one of the main essence of time management. Every other thing falls in place on that time. Yeah, today has really been a very, very interesting time. We talked about study habits, like we said our topic is study habits by group two. And it has been really, really interesting. I've seen different perspectives. I hope that you have been able to learn study habits, been able to learn perspectives, been able to learn boundaries be able to learn what works best for you and how to be able to go about your daily um, habits as much as it concerns studies. My name is Tohana Amoka Fedeli. To remain your one and only Rafael Agaba. My name is Damilola Charles and it's really, it's, it's really a great time having this conversation, mm. like showing different perspectives. Life is all about different perspectives. Yeah. Seeing things from different sides. So that's what we did here and I'm so glad we had this engaging time and content. Thank you for watching. Thank you so